my name is Tyler Edmonds. I'm the state's attorney in Union County. I've been the state's attorney there for about 10 years, uh, and I'm running for judge in the first judicial circuit. That's Jackson, Williamson, Saline, Union, Johnson, Pope, Alexander, Pulaski, and Massac counties. So a pretty wide area here. Yeah, in it's a Illinois. big area to cover. So why do you want to be judge? Well, I, I didn't always, uh, when I went to law school and when I became a state's attorney, being a judge wasn't really the first thing on my mind. But as I've been a state's attorney, I'm in the courtroom every single day uh, handling hundreds of felony cases at any time, as well as working with my staff on juvenile cases and, and other types of cases. And I really have seen the impact that judges have uh, every single day on the lives of people all across southern Illinois. So uh, it's an honor to be a prosecutor. It's an honor to go into court and represent the people of the state of Illinois and stand with crime victims and uh, work to make our community safer. Uh, but it would be, uh, I think, uh, an honor also to serve as a judge because the judge on any particular case, I think, is the a uh, public official that has the most impact on the life of a person who uh, is interacting with government. Now you mentioned about 10 years as Union County State's Attorney, but what else do you think kind of makes you qualified or to meet the requirements to serve as a judge? Well, I have, uh, as State's Attorney, I am in the courtroom every single day. Uh, I am making decisions about what cases to charge and not charge, uh, what types of offers to make on cases. So we're, in the State's Attorney's Office as a prosecutor, we're making decisions every single day. Uh, and not only in criminal cases, but as a state's attorney, I also handle a number of civil matters for the county, from real estate to employment law to uh, compliance with any number of state and federal requirements that we have to deal with as a local government, uh, and even finance issues and making sure that the county's doing things the way that they, they should. So uh, I've also, before being state's attorney, was in private practice, uh, civil litigation, as well as state and local government law. So I think I have a wide variety of experience and I think it's important for people to understand that a state's attorney is not limited to criminal cases. We handle so many civil cases every day, and I handle all the civil work in our office. Okay. And integrity and ethical conduct are obviously uh, key for a position yeah. like, like Absolutely. judge. So how do you hold yourself accountable? Well, that's a, that's a, I think you could go talk a lot on that particular question. I mean, I, the first thing, uh, personally, you hold yourself accountable. Uh, in what you're doing with your family, your friends, and your faith. And you have people that you're close to, mm -hmm. people that you, when you really have those gut check questions, those are the people you go to. Uh, more directly in the professional sense, uh, as a prosecutor, uh, we're held to specific ethical standards. Uh, we are not in the business of just getting convictions. It's not our job just to win cases as mm -hmm. a prosecutor. It's our job to seek justice in every single case. Uh, and so what that means can look very different depending on the case. But what you have to do is work uh, with law enforcement, consult with your peers. When you have tough questions, uh, y you really have to check yourself and hold yourself accountable to others. So whether that's other prosecutors, whether that's law enforcement, uh, working with the victims, making sure that they're heard in the case, you really need to not just rely on yourself. You have to bring in others uh, to help you make uh, make sure that you're making the right decision when you have those tough calls. How do you do that vetting process though when you, when you, you know, obviously you can hold yourself accountable but then when you are hiring or surrounding yourself with men and women who you will hope are kind of filling the same shoes that you're trying to fill as, as far as that ethical and how do you kind of look out for those people? Well, I think the first thing you do is you make sure you have the right standards in place uh, in the office, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we're very uh, diligent about doing that and, and following up on our ethical requirements and fulfilling our ethical obligations. Uh, we meet regularly, review cases. Uh, assistant state's attorneys meet with me. I meet with them. When I'm handling a case, I still go to my assistants and say, I've got this case. This is what I'm looking at. This is what I'm thinking about doing. Do you, do you think that's the right thing? Mm -hmm. And it's not because you're second guessing yourself, but it's because the decisions that you're making in, in the state's attorney's office and in the courtroom affect people's lives and you want to uh, be sure that you're doing the best that you can uh, with the caveat that sometimes you're trying to make the best out of a bad situation. So sure. it's, uh, the, the answers aren't easy, but I think that's why being a prosecutor is a particularly uh, good background to be a judge because every single day you're making those decisions and making uh, sometimes you'd have to deliver bad news to people mm -hmm. and uh, you, you do it with integrity, you do it with transparency and you just try to be clear and, and show people 
uh, tell people where you stand and why you're making a decision. You, you mentioned bad news. So what would you say are some specific issues that may be confronting judges in Southern Illinois and in the First Circuit District, or First Judicial Circuit? Well, there are a number of issues. Obviously, being a prosecutor in the courtroom, we, we have a number of issues in the criminal justice system that judges, public defenders, attorneys, prosecutors are all dealing with. Uh, drug abuse continues to be a huge problem, uh, not just in Southern Illinois, but across the country. That's not news mm -hmm. to anyone. Uh, but that's something that uh, it, it fills up the dockets. Uh, so many of our cases revolve around substance abuse, even if they're theft cases, burglary cases, domestic battery, a lot of it comes back to substance abuse. So that's something that we do everything we can on. We work with law enforcement, state, uh, local and federal to try to do what we can on those issues and we work with our judges and our public defenders to try to put programs in place to deal with those problems. Is there something you as a judge could do to help alleviate this uh, this opioid and, and drug uh, abuse problem here in Southern? Well, I think if I were fortunate enough to be elected judge, I think I would do the same things that I've tried to do as a prosecutor, mm -hmm. which is bring in uh, alternative dispositions that can hold people accountable, but also try to get people on the right path in life, because it's always a fine line in the criminal justice system and in court. Uh, you want to come up with a disposition that is fair, that holds people accountable, but you also want to try to get people on the right path so that they can be productive citizens. Now, you mentioned earlier as state's attorney that you deal with both criminal and civil, and obviously you'll be doing that as a judge too. So how has your background and legal, kind of expand on that a little bit more, how has your legal experience kind of prepared you for dealing with both civil and criminal cases? Well, as I said, as a prosecutor, everyone knows we deal with criminal cases every single day, mm -hmm. uh, from traffic tickets to domestic battery to homicide. Uh, and we work on the investigative side, we, we work in the courtroom, we do all of those things. But on the civil side, uh, every day I am dealing with issues. I am the attorney for the county board, the sheriff, all of the county elected officials. So I'm advising them when they come to me with an employment law question, with a real estate question, with a tax question. Uh, we draft ordinances for the county board, so we're drafting laws that our county board is passing that mm -hmm. impact our county. Uh, we work with many outside uh, vendors uh, and other attorneys that work in our office, uh, work with our office, I should say, uh, to deal with all the legal business of the county. So essentially the state's attorney is the general counsel for, for county government. Uh, so we're dealing with any manner of issue that you could think of on the civil side uh, that would touch on business or government. Very good. And so can you provide an example of how judges act and rule impartially? Well, every single day, judges are having to make decisions, and uh, just as prosecutors are having to make decisions. And inevitably, some people are not going to agree with those decisions. But what I think is key, and has served me well, I think, as a prosecutor, uh, is you want, to, you want to listen to people. Uh, you want to make sure that they know that they're heard. You want to make sure that they know what the process is and how the decision is made, what the basis is for it, and you want to explain your decision in a way that makes sense and so that people feel that they've been heard and that they were respected. Uh, and that doesn't mean they're always going to agree with you, but at least if you can communicate to people that you have a fair process, that everyone is heard, and that you have a, a, a rational and logical reason for your decision, I think people can walk away feeling that the process has at least served them well, even if they don't agree with the result. And what uh, role does a circuit judge play when it comes to controlling cost, especially in, in smaller counties? Obviously, Southern Illinois, a lot more rural and, and very small uh, areas as well when budgets are so tight. Well, I can tell you, as a prosecutor, I work with our county board and our treasurer on my own budget in the state's attorney's office. I also work with the sheriff and the presiding judge in our county because there's a lot of overlap in our budgets. What, what I do impacts the sheriff's budget and the court's budget. What the court does impacts the state's attorney's budget and the sheriff's budget. Mm -hmm. uh, so we try to be open and clear in our communication uh, with the sheriff, the presiding judge, and the county board on, on what costs we anticipate. Uh, and try to stay obviously within our budgets and adjust things if we need to to try to reduce cost. Uh, with, with the caveat that as a prosecutor, and same thing the sheriff's going to tell you, we always are concerned about public safety. That's our number mm -hmm. one concern, sure. but we also realize that we have to be fiscally responsible and working with the county board. So 
again, I think having experience of doing that for 10 years is going to give me good experience if I'm fortunate enough to be elected judge to work with other judges, with public defenders, prosecutors, sheriff, and the county board in trying to manage a budget. Because court costs and, and public safety law enforcement is a huge percentage of any county's budget in southern Illinois. And I think any county board member across the nine counties is going to tell you that. So again, what we try to do is be open and clear in what we're doing, what our, what our limitations are. Uh, I mean, if, if certain cases have to be tried that are going to involve large expense, they have to be tried. Mm -hmm. But you at least need to communicate that with the county board to make sure they can anticipate that. The same thing with incarceration costs. Uh, you know, we try to be mindful of the taxpayers, of course, when we're considering how many people are going to be in the jail at any one time. But at the same time, we're not going to compromise public safety as prosecutors, as law enforcement. So the judge has to balance all of those things, but I think it's very important uh, that a judge has had experience in working with county budgets and other elected officials in trying to balance those issues while respecting the fiscal issues for the taxpayers and also uh, making sure that public safety is, is the number one priority. And that kind of ties into the next question too because you know you mentioned county budgets and whatnot and obviously counties are seeing less and municipalities are seeing less coming from the state level as well. So what kind of impact uh, does state economics play in the, in the courtroom? Well, the, the state budget impasse had a huge impact on, on the county government and the court system generally. But I can, can tell you that what we've done in our office, in the state's attorney's office in Union County, uh, we have worked to bring uh, outside money into not just Union County, but the entire First Circuit to try to deal with some of these issues that we see in the okay. court system. So we have received uh, money in our county to fund uh, Juvenile Justice Council for our uh, full nine counties in the circuit, Jackson, Williamson, Saline, Union, Johnson, Pope, Alexander, Pulaski, Massac. Uh, and that has brought together uh, faith leaders, schools, law enforcement, public defenders, uh, and many others from the community to try to work to create positive opportunities for juveniles to keep them out of the court system. Uh, and that's money that's been brought into Southern Illinois and also alleviates pressure from the court system because obviously the fewer kids that we have in the court system, the better for everyone mm -hmm. as a society, sure. the better for those kids, but also the better for county budgets. Uh, we have also worked to bring a program called Redeploy Illinois uh, to Southern Illinois and that again has gone through Union County. I'm very appreciative of the efforts of our board, our judges, uh, and our public defenders in supporting that program. But it hasn't just benefited Union County, it's actually benefited six other counties uh, in Southern Illinois, including Jackson County and Saline County. And that program brings state money to uh, fund intensive juvenile probation for uh, kids that are uh, going down a path where they're very likely to end up in prison. And that uh, ultimately saves taxpayer money because it's, it's much cheaper to put kids on probation mm -hmm. than to incarcerate them. And it also uh, results in safer communities because if we get kids on the right path, we're keeping them out of a life of crime that unfortunately we see too many times sure. that kids go down that, that path. Um, and that program has been very successful. In fact, in, uh, when it's been fully operational in uh, the First Circuit, it has reduced juvenile incarceration by 70%. Oh, wow. Talk to me about temperament and what kind of uh, personality you would bring to the bench. Well, I, I think, uh, it, you know, it's always difficult for someone to, to self-analyze sure. themselves, but I think uh, as a prosecutor, I have worked very hard to maintain an even temperament uh, and be respectful of all people, even if they don't agree with what I'm doing. Uh, I, I always try to be respectful, consider both sides, hear what people have to say, and explain to them in clear terms why a decision's being made. So again, I think uh, it's all about how you treat people. Uh, it is being respectful, listening, explaining, uh, and making sure that people know that you're trying to do the right thing and consider all sides. Here's a question that I've always had uh, and never have had an opportunity to ask until now. How do you keep politics out of this job? You know, you're following the law, you're, you're, you're a judge, but you have to declare a party affiliation and there are obviously Democrats and Republicans in this race. So how do you keep politics uh, from influencing decisions? Well, in serving 10 years as a prosecutor, I can tell you that you run, you run for office to be a state's attorney or a judge on a political party, but when you are in your office making decisions when you're in the courtroom, that's not a factor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not because uh, your job is to do the right thing. Your job is to do justice. 
And of course, you bring your background, your life experiences with you, as you should, to sure. make those decisions. That should inform uh, how you think about the world, of course. But it's very important that you maintain uh, a basis for what you're doing and explain that to people. And again, I think that all goes back to being transparent and open and honest and clear in what you're doing, how, the process that you're using, and how you're coming to your decisions. What is your view on cameras in the courtroom for trials? Uh, I personally uh, think it's a good thing anytime we can get uh, the public and the media access to what's going on in the criminal mm -hmm. justice system. I think for many people, uh, when they aren't in the courtroom uh, or dealing with law enforcement, they really don't don't know what's what's going on uh, kind of behind the curtain. So I think I think cameras in the courtroom is a great thing. Now there is a process in each individual case to allow that where the judge has to make certain findings. And of course, uh, if I were fortunate enough to be elected judge, you would go through that process and make sure that everyone is receiving fair treatment, uh, even if the media is allowed into the courtroom. But as a general matter, I support anything that's going to get more information to the public on how government works and how the criminal justice system works, how the court system works. One last question, and it's from the Illinois State Bar Association. Uh, they put out a, a list of all the candidates and, and recommendations and, and kind of analyze them. Have you seen this report or are you aware? I, I am. Okay, so you are on the list of, of recommended by this group with a score of 83%. What are your thoughts on, on these kind of um, analysis and, and, and the Illinois Bar Association? Well, I, uh, it's certainly uh, an honor when your peers, it's judges and attorneys practicing mm -hmm. in Southern Illinois, uh, think that you're qualified, recommended I should say, recommended sure. to do the job and that you meet the qualifications. Uh, I'm proud of that. I try to have a good relationship and treat everyone with respect in the courtroom uh, and out of the courtroom when it comes to dealing with people that, that are in the court system. But ultimately, it's going to be up to the voters, and that's what really matters. And I, I believe that my record as a state's attorney and my ideas for uh, continuing to improve the court system in Southern Illinois is what matters. And I, I, uh, I appreciate the recommendation from attorneys and judges, but I really uh, want to go out and talk to the voters and make sure that they know who I am and what I'm about and why I'm running for judge. Anything else you want to add as we wrap things up today? Well, I just want to say thank you all very much. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate uh, your efforts here at Channel 3 uh, to get information out to the public on these judicial races. There are so many vacancies across yeah. Southern Illinois in one county, nine counties. Uh, I think it's important that the public knows who's running, uh, and it's their court system, and I want to make sure that they have confidence in it. All righty. Thank you so much right. for joining us Thank today. you very much, Kevin. Appreciate, appreciate it.